God, we need you to pour out your spirit right now.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fill us now, oh God. Praise God. Praise God. Good evening. Amen. Here we are again on another Wednesday. This is a Worship Wednesday, Wellness Wednesday, Wisdom Wednesday. We want to thank God for all of the saints. Amen. For all of you joining us today, we thank you. And I'm asking that you would please share and let everybody know that the Israel Missionary Baptist Church, Grace Temple, amen, safer at home online worship on Wednesday night, Wednesday night Bible study. We have some exciting things for you, of course. We have a word from the Lord, have music, putting praise in the atmosphere, as always. And then also, amen, we're still honoring all of our mothers, and we thank God for our mothers. Uh, we're going to share with you the sermon I preached at Grace early at 845 that we have not streamed yet. Uh, we're going to get a chance to do that today. Uh, but I am uh, certainly, certainly delighted, delighted to be amongst the saints of God. Amen. Even on this Wednesday. Tonight, our focus, the focus on our study, you know what we do. We put praise in the atmosphere and prayer in the air. And tonight, tonight, we're going to be talking about praying it forward. Yes, P-R-A-Y-I-N-G, praying it forward. Amen. I'll tell you more about that when we get to our scripture lesson. Uh, amen. A little later in the in this uh, presentation, but I want to take time before we even start with our scripture to say to you a great big good evening. Good evening to all of the beloved saints of God. Thank you. Um, Irma, I'm glad to see you. Mary Purnell, amen. JJ, still praying for you. And Jeff Charmaine, praying for you. Overtake, overwhelm, amen. God is will keep you. I'm telling you, my God is able. He, is, he can do all things, all things but fail. Uh, and again, I tell you, just trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. He will do it. I'm telling you, he'll do it. Uh, he continues to do it day by day, moment by moment. Uh, and I thank God that he is doing it. He's doing it even now. Uh, as we are into our uh, opportunity today, we have a number of different things that are coming up. I hope you are preparing yourself, amen, for the district, Pacific District Annual Session. The district annual session will take place. Uh, it will take place at Israel Baptist Church starting next Monday. Amen. We're looking for choir members. Amen. All of those who will sing. Uh, amen. Thursday night is the Israel rehearsal. The mass choir. Mass choir for the Pacific District Mass Choir. We're asking Israel and Grace Temple. All of us are part of the district. We want to be in rehearsal on Friday and throughout the week. Throughout the week we will be ministering. Uh, we have so many exciting plans for the annual session. It's been a long time uh, since, Israel, since Israel has been a host, and it's been a long time. In fact, since the association, because of the pandemic, they were unable to have it on last year. But uh, we are honored to be the host, amen, in the post-pandemic uh, Pacific District Annual Session. Uh, we worked real hard. I thank God. Now, y'all continue to help me pray. Continue to pray for all of our staff, deacons and trustees, both uh, Israel and Grace Temple. Uh, and then we want to pray for our iTech team and the media team, Grace Media. We want to make sure that, uh, amen, we keep our team prayed up. Uh, amen. They work really hard. In fact, they they are uh, also parents and fathers and amen, family, mothers, uh, amen, they, uh, daughters, and they work real hard. They have jobs, amen, uh, and they do all, but yet and still, they find time to help do this. And so we want to say thank you to all those who make this stream possible, and then all of the members of Israel and Grace who make it possible for us to enter back 
into worship. Yes, we're back into every Sunday, every location, Grace Temple at 845. Uh, amen. We start praying the building down, asking God's anointing for the full day of worship. Amen. And then the choir ministers, we have a great time. And then at 1130 uh, for the morning worship at Israel. But don't forget, we are back in Sunday School Live. Sunday School Live every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, at Israel Baptist Church. Those of you who are uh, Sunday School students, I'm telling you, the lessons have been outstanding. Throughout the entire 2020, the pandemic, we have not missed one Sunday, uh, amen, and presenting our Sunday school lessons on Sunday morning by the way of streaming. But just recently, this month is the first month in a long time, amen, in over a year that we've had, uh, amen, this month of May, we've had live Sunday school. Yeah, we're getting back to it, and I am excited about it. So pray for all of our instructors. We're going to continue. We're going to continue to stream Amen. So those who are not ready to come back to the church, not ready to come back into a class setting, you can still be in the class at home. Amen. By joining us online, we encourage you uh, to continue, continue to study, continue to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. So as you come and you join us in our worship services, uh, amen. We want to remember we're still a mask mandated. We're mask mandated on the inside. We want to make sure everybody is safe. We're still socially distant. Uh, and we want to make sure that we are all, we're all healthy. Amen. Temperature check uh, will be done in each location. So thank you uh, for getting ready to come back as the Holy Spirit leads you. Don't let nobody rush you. You be led by the Holy Spirit and by your doctor. Uh, amen. The science will tell us we know things are getting better uh, in many cases, but in some places, some places it's still pretty tough. I'm praying for the family of, uh, of Jeff and J.J. Johnson. Amen. Jesse Johnson, who passed away and his loving wife, uh, both husband and wife, just days apart. Uh, as I mentioned to you, and we're praying that God will bless that family in this season of their their sorrow and suffering. Uh, there have been others. Others, but yet we still got testimonies of how God is healing. Amen. We shared with you, amen, uh, about uh, my son in law's aunt, amen, Ricky's aunt, who was placed into uh, the hospital, went in early in the morning, and they put her automatically on a ventilator, but only to discover later on the day God worked it off. They were able to take her off within 24 hours. I'm telling you, we've been praying on the prayer line, and I'm telling you, prayers of the righteous availeth much. And so we thank God for how God is answering, answering those prayers. So while we're talking about that, y'all come up to pray for us today, all tonight, Wednesday, Wisdom Wednesday. We're talking about praying it forward, praying it forward. Uh, amen. So we want you to continue to stay in prayer on the prayer line with, uh, with Israel at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. And with Grace Temple at 5 every day at 5 p.m. And both prayer lines, y'all, all three prayer services are fire-filled. I'm telling you, they're Holy Ghost. They are anointed. It's like church service on the prayer line. Amen. And I thank God for those who have been consistently and faithfully going to God on behalf of the people of God. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much, all the prayer warriors, for your prayers for me and the prayers for our, our communities uh, and the prayers for this land and this country. Prayers work, and I'm so delighted that somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind, took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad they prayed. Yes, I'm glad they prayed for me. Uh, so if you're glad that somebody prayed for you, our responsibility now is we got to pray it forward. There you go. Pray it forward. Amen. It's not a certain time in our lives we can't always be the recipient of prayer. Amen. I thank God I am the poster child of prayer. People have been praying for me all my life. Thank God. I, and I need the prayers of the righteous. But it's my responsibility to keep praying it forward. Like people prayed for you. You got to pray for somebody else. Amen. Like the grandmothers that pray for their children. Now, now it's some new, amen. Now the grandchild is now the grandmother and we got to pray it forward. We have to teach this new generation, our next generation on how to call on the name of the Lord. Uh, amen. Cause he's already said, if my people, second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, 
uh, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. And we are in a season all over the world where we need healing, healing. It's happening, thank God, for Los Angeles, for California, for L.A. County, and many other states. But there are some other states that are going through some terrible times yet still. And so we're praying for them that God will uh, protect them, even through the weather, the rain back south. Amen. Uh, we are praying that God will watch over all of our loved ones and God will keep them in his precious protective protective care amen here's a read for this morning it's found in john uh this evening excuse me john chapter 17 john chapter 17 and i'm going to begin at verse number nine john saint john chapter 17 and beginning at verse number nine these are the words of jesus and jesus says i pray for them i pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I am come to thee, Holy Father, keep them through thine own name, those whom thou hast given to me, that they may be as one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them also into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. The green grass withereth, the flower fades away, but the word of God shall stand forever. Amen. This is the prayer of Jesus Christ. Amen. When he was talking to God about how he had on his preparing to re-enter into the presence of God into heaven. He knew he was on his way to glory. Amen. But he he wanted to make sure that Jesus wanted to make sure that all of us uh, were taken care of. He says, neither pray I for these alone, those who was praying for his disciples that was right there with him. But Jesus prayed it forward. He says, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. But y'all, that includes you and I. Jesus was praying it forward even when he was praying for his own disciples. It's not only these that I'm praying for. Amen. Peter, James, and John. Amen. Matthew. Amen. Bartholomew. Not just them. Amen. Not just Mary and Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, Cleopas. Not just, not just them, but I pray for those who shall believe on me through their word. Y'all, amen. And it's by the word and by the testimonies, by the saints, the apostles' doctrine, by the teaching of the Bible, I believe. And so Jesus was praying praying it forward even when he was praying at this time with his disciples he had you and me in mind amen we got some more things we want to tell you about it, even how he we pray it forward your prayers are not in vain saints i want to tell you you say i'm praying but it don't always work it doesn't always come amen listen he may not come when you want him but if you keep on praying i'm telling you Amen. It's not that God is hard of hearing, not that he's trying to ignore us. Amen. Faith is how we pursue God. It's how we keep coming. Amen. We continuously uh, beseech him and petition him. So I'm encouraging you, don't quit praying. Even though you may not have had your answer yet. You said, I'm still not healed like I want to be. You are healed. You just don't see the healing yet. You have to believe it before you see it. You are prosperous. You are favored. Amen. But you have to believe it. Amen. And walk in it. That's what prayer is about. Uh, the faith. The prayer of faith will do miraculous and incredible, incredible things. 
Um, and so now I'm realizing that in John chapter 17 is where our devotional scripture. I want to pray now uh, and then we'll go into further announcements and then I'm going to get to uh, these other two scriptures and then our sermon for this morning, uh, for this evening. Now, um, in, in, in this uh, praying it forward, praying it forward, uh, I, I encourage every saint to make sure you have uh, a prayer partner. A prayer partner, amen. If you're a prayer group, uh, amen. Certainly God hears all of us. He hears all of us when we pray. And there are some times when you ain't going to be able to get in touch with nobody. You need to know how to pray by, by yourself, for yourself, amen, uh, amen, with yourself. You got to learn how, amen, just you and the Holy Ghost. But it's a beautiful thing. The Bible declares where two or three come together, touching and agreeing in my name. It's just something about unity and it's about partnership when we come together in agreement. Uh, and so that's what it, uh, it is, even for the strength of a ministry, churches and auxiliaries, ministries, families. It's something special about when we come together. Amen. God honors. God glorifies. God blesses. Listen, he adds his favor. Amen. To those. And when we come to him, touching and agreeing, touching and agreeing. And so as we are reminded as often as we can to pray to pray. You don't have to pray like the sainted warrior, the old deacon or the pastor or the preacher, amen, or the mother, amen, on the mother's board. You pray from your heart. Pray from your spirit. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray according to the will of God, and you cannot go wrong. You ask God, amen. You glorify him. You give him praise in every prayer. You got to praise God. Hear me, y'all. Amen. Every prayer got to have some adoration, self-forgetting adoration. It ain't praise when you're thinking about yourself. Amen. But when you forget about yourself and you just glorify God for who he is, that's true praise. Amen. True praise. And then praise is a little bit different, but it's also inclusive with thanksgiving. I praise him just because who he is, but then I also thank him for what he did. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody else that I know y'all might not be close to your little thumb section, but if you thank him for some stuff he's done for you this week, I'm gonna, come on, y'all, we're still live, interactive. If you thank him for something he's done for you this week, amen, you ought to give God the glory. Say amen with your voice or with your thumbs, but somebody need to tell God, you've been mighty good to me. Yes, I thank him. Yes, I see you, Lamar. I see you, Tristan. Hey, Mama. Amen. Dorothy Howard is watching. Portia, Auntie Di, Sharon Gustavus. Amen. I see you. I see you, Auntie Mary Parnell, JJ. I know all y'all. God has done some stuff for us. Charmaine. Amen. I know it. I know it. I know it. And I'm telling you right now, if you just keep trusting in him and don't turn, don't give up, don't quit. Amen. The road is rough. And the going gets tough. Amen. But I'm telling you, amen. The heels are hard to climb, but don't you give up. Don't you quit. I decided long ago, amen, to make Jesus my choice. And if you choose Jesus, amen, you choose faith. You choose to walk by faith and not by sight. So uh, those of you, uh, have we praying? Continue to pray for uh, amen. We have so many we're praying for, as I mentioned, JJ uh, and, and Jeff and, and for the loss of their family members. We're praying also still for Rosalind Huggins. Praying for Rosalind, y'all. Pray for Rosalind. Uh, amen. We're praying in the name of Jesus for Keisha Thompson. We still have Keisha on our prayer list. Uh, we're praying for Pearlene Garrett. Pearlene Garrett. Continue to keep her. That's Irma's mom. Amen. That's Jeffrey's caregiver. Amen. And we thank God for for Mama Pearlie and Garrett. And so we know that God, I told you, amen, about Annette's, uh, Ricky's uh, auntie, amen, the healing, the prayers of the righteous. I got a call a day and said, amen, she's doing better already. Amen. They, they, she went in yesterday and they put her on the ventilator and then by the evening they took her right back off. Y'all y'all don't realize the power of prayer. We got the word around 7 or 8 and we started praying earlier, amen. Uh, was praying while we were still on the meeting line. And God was answering the prayer while we were praying it. Y'all, anybody know that he may not come when you want him, but every now and then he's even a, ahead of you. He'll even respond before you can ask him because he knows, amen, he knows exactly the petitions of our people. Amen. So that, that's I'm just trying to tell somebody, amen, prayer, prayer works. 
prayer works. It works. Amen. The thing about it now is we have to work it. Amen. We got to fall on our knees. We got to lift our petitions to God. But find you somebody that you can pray with. We have, you know, you, you, you have more strength where two are together. Two can put, amen, demons. One can put a thousand to flight, but two can put 10,000 demons to flight. I'm telling you, we got some demons, amen, all in this country, demons all in our community, all in our neighborhoods. We got, amen, we need to come together, amen, so we can be victorious and bind the works of the enemy. We have to bind the works of the enemy, and that's by prayer. The weapons, good God Almighty, that's another scripture that I'm going to have to deal with. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are spiritual, mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. If you want to break through some stuff, amen, you can't fight, amen, with, with carnal weapons or natural weapons or worldly weapons. You got to fight the spiritual fight with the spiritual weapons. And that is the word of God, the power of prayer, amen, perfect praise, amen. All of these things are the, the, the saints' the saints ammunition to fight against the wiles of the devil by faith we quench the fiery darts the sword amen the word of god is the sword of the spirit amen we can't fight amen like everybody else fights saints and if you're fighting and it's not according to the word of god you're not fighting the right fight in the name of jesus so we're trusting god and we're asking god to lead us and to guide us my pastor dr wilbur hudson i don't know if anybody had a chance to meet him he's been going on to be with the lord for a while he used to have a saying, see, keep fighting sin and Satan and not your brother and keep as sweet as sugar pie. Amen. We got too much sin and too much of the works of Satan to be fighting. Amen. That we don't have time, y'all. You ain't got time to be fighting your brother and your sister, your husband and your wife, your sons or your daughters. We ain't got time to be fighting each other in the church. We got a great fight against the amen, the wickedness, spiritual wickedness in high places, against brutality, against inequities. We got a lot of stuff that we got to fight through prayer. And I know we can do it. I know we can do it if we do it together and anoint in the name of Jesus. So in our prayers, I know y'all right. In our prayers, we're going to keep praying for all those. We're going to keep praying for Louis. Praise God. I got the word. I got the word. Hey, Brenda, I got the word. Amen. That Louis, they put him in a home. They put him in a place, uh, a, a convalescent. But by the grace of God, my understanding is they took him off of hospice. Good God Almighty. Hey, I'm thanking God. Just little bitty victories will always lead to great big victories. Amen. But we have to all pray because we know God is hearing us and God is meeting our needs. Amen. So let me go through prayer and then I'll come back with all the announcements. If there are any other prayer requests, amen. I see all those who are online. If there are any other prayer requests, you're certainly uh, invited to, um, to submit them in your comment section or in group me. Uh, Cause we do pray. I'm telling you, when we call out names on the prayer line, I'm telling you, they spend minutes, Amen, uh, Amen. Sometimes multiple minutes calling out names, names and church names and family names, uh, because we know that the prayer, specific prayer, Amen, brings about specific specific results. And that's what I want from God. I don't want just haphazard, just Lord, if you will, if you feel like it, Amen. He didn't tell us to pray. He told us to pray with confidence. Come boldly before the throne of grace. And so that's what we want to do. So now let's do that. Let's go boldly, amen, before his throne. Our heavenly father, thank you, Lord, on this Wednesday night. Thank you for allowing us another chance to pray. Thank you for allowing us the privilege of being together touching and agreeing by the way of uh, Father God, YouTube, by the way of Facebook, by the way of Instagram. We thank you for the privilege of Zoom, Father God, and all the other methods of uh, instruments of mediums that you use for us to be in connection with each other. But we know, Father God, that you are there in the midst. Just like you're here with me, Father God, you're in every home. You're in Grace. You're in Israel, Father God. You are in all the other churches. You're in Southern St. Paul Calvary, Father God. You are in Mount Allah, Father God. You're in the name of Jesus or at uh, Greater Emmanuel. You're at Greater Ebenezer. You're at St. Mark. Father God, I thank you that you are with all of our church family. We come praying in Jesus' name that you'll meet our needs as we continue to pray it forward. We just pray not only for 
for, for Israel and for grace. We pray for every ministry, every congregation, every denomination that's called by your name, that's preaching the gospel, that Jesus Christ is your son, that he was, uh, amen, crucified, and that he was buried and rose again on the third day. We come declaring that everyone who proceeds and everyone who professes and proclaims that message, we ask that you will shower your blessings. We ask for favor. We ask for wisdom. We ask for your grace. And then, Father God, while we're ministering uh, on our Wednesday nights and Friday nights and Sunday morning, Sunday school and morning worship, we ask on next week you'll be with us in our Pacific District annual session. Be with our moderator, Moderator Harold Mitchell. Father God, be with us every night. Father God, we pray that you would bless every congregation and every member as we move back into, Father God, our worship, uh, Father God, and our consistent worships. Father God, we pray that you would give us the wisdom and give us the safety and security this week and the every week, every Sunday thereafter, that you'll continue to bless your people. We thank you now for that and so many other things in which we give you the glory for. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy, y'all. We got a lot and we want to never stop praying because prayer is indeed always in order. Amen. Uh, and it makes it a little easier to pray when you know God hears you and when you know God answers us. And so pray for all, all you know to pray for and duty bound to pray for. And, in the, and even those that you don't know. Amen. Praying it forward. Let me tell you what else when we pray. Something my grandmother used to say. Uh, amen. And y'all, uh, you probably heard it. Maybe you have heard it. I used to hear her when she prayed. Amen. She lived to be 104 years old and she had a relationship with God. Amen. She didn't have a diploma, high school uh, diploma. She didn't have no degree, but she had a BA. She was born again. And she used to say, Lord, bless, bless, uh, good God Almighty. And I thank my mom, Dorothy. My mom, Dorothy, took care of her, here and my dad until her her last days on earth amen thank you mama thank you again for so much but thank you for how you took care of my how you took care of my Juanita. she used to say my Juanita used to say lord bless amen uh amen bless my unknown generation unborn bless the unborn generation grandma was praying for kids that weren't even born yet uh, I'm telling you, amen. And that's what the saints of God, come on, y'all. We need those kind of saints that pray it forward. Amen. Not just praying for, for the past generation, our present generation. We got to pray not for our children. And sometimes even yet the unborn. Amen. Because in this uh, world, amen, babies that are being born are being born into something different. Y'all, we got to pray for our babies. We got to pray for our children. Amen. And so when we pray, pray it forward. Amen. We pray it forward by remembering those. Amen. Who we don't may not even know yet. Amen. Praying for Amen. My children, uh, bless their heart, never got a chance to get to meet their their my biological mother, uh, their grandmother. She passed away before either of them were born, except for my oldest, Nikki. Uh, amen. But I praise God. I thank God that they have an opportunity to have so many mothers in their life. And then Dorothy, Amen. She's been just wonderful. My God. My daddy know how to pick them. But I'm trying to tell you for all, and I'm doing this because Mother's Day and prayer, amen, a praying mother, and all that goes together by praying it forward, praying it forward. Uh, and so in all of our prayers, uh, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, let's pray for the next generation. Let's teach them. Let's teach them how, how to pray so they'll know exactly how to call on God in a time of trouble. Listen, I'm glad. Listen, I'm glad somebody prayed for me had me on their mind. But more importantly than that, I'm glad somebody taught me how to pray for myself. Amen. There are some times when the pastor, you ain't going to be able to reach the pastor. You won't be able to reach the deacons or the mothers. Amen. Or your mother or the or your, even your prayer partner. But if you know how to pray for yourself, if you know how to ask God and go before his throne, you are more, you are more than blessed because you have something that the world, amen, wish they, they could have. You have an open line in the name of Jesus. You have an open line of communication with our Heavenly Father. With our Heavenly Father. So let's continue to pray it forward, y'all. Pray it forward. We'll get back to you with the other scripture. But uh, let me share with you. Um, amen. Um, 
let's go ahead. Let's have a selection right now, Brandon. We'll have that selection, and then we'll come back with uh, the few of the announcements and the other part of the lesson because we want to get to the word tonight. Amen. Uh, the sermon tonight was from Sunday morning at Grace Temple. Uh, it's entitled, Do It for Mama. Do it for mama. Amen. I hope you're blessed by it. But we want to finish about this Bible. I got another scripture I want to share with you before even the sermon. A scripture regarding praying it forward. Dealing with eschatology. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the selection. And then we're going to come right back and share with you some more announcements and some more from the word of God. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many of you got a testimony? Because God has shown up been good. He brought us out of danger, seen and unseen. And we are a testimony. Hallelujah.
got a testimony. Amen. And all of us, amen, as we've been praying it forward, watching God do things, we all ought to have a testimony. In fact, let's continue. I, I talked to Trudy earlier today, who uh, Trudy Shannon, who gave it, uh, who led that song, I Have a Testimony. Amen. Pray for Trudy. Amen. She having uh, having some difficulties uh, right now, some extreme pain. Uh, so I forget, neglected them, as well as Robbie. Pray for Robbie. Amen. Our administrative staff, our chief of staff, and our secretary, both are experiencing pains uh, in their limbs and uh, other things and in their and the dental work and some others. So pray that God's healing and God's hand and his encouragement uh, will bless all of those who serve God. Uh, amen. That's, uh, that's all the people of God. So thank you. Amen. A testimony. I can truly say that God has brought me all the way. I have a testimony. Amen. Now, listen, while you're on here, thank you so much uh, for joining us and being with us. Uh, amen. We are now continuing, continuing in our um, reminding that today, tonight, not only will we be sharing, amen, the sermon from Sunday momentarily, from Sunday morning, uh, 845 at Grace, but then we also want to remind every child of God, amen, every child of God that we have to continue to pray. Pray it forward pray it forward i want to tell you about the importance of another scripture uh and i want to take you to the book of revelation revelation uh, oftentimes we don't realize and you may have i think it was a movie uh talk about pay it p-a-y pay it forward or someone who blessed someone who was in need uh, and he said rather than pay me back pay it forward there was not uh, maybe it, it, it turned out to be a movie but originally it started out as a as a campaign uh, where different individuals would uh, would go out and make it a practice of trying to find someone when somebody helped them to pay it forward but I want to tell you the same concept the same concept of paying it forward amen sometimes amen some people don't want you to bless them back they want you to bless somebody else who needs blessing amen oftentimes when I help people I don't know uh, and we have a, a, us a good habit, amen, that sometimes, you know, there are always people around us that say, can you help me, amen, can you do this, and you may give them a dollar or two or five or ten or twenty, depends on what the situation is, who it is, amen, you know you'll never see that person again, so all you can tell them is help somebody else when you get a chance. Now, that's what the, the idea of prayer is, amen. Your prayers are not only prayers for the present. Good God Almighty. Our prayers are not just prayers for the present. Uh, I thank God that my prayer, God it got right now prayers. Amen. He can answer right now. He can answer in this moment. But oftentimes our prayers are also stored up. Amen. They are kept uh, and to be used for later usage. In eschatology, in eschatology, which are the study of last things, the study of the last days. Uh, amen. We, we know that there are different periods of time. We know that the we're looking we're living in an apostasy and we know coming up next is the rapture any moment any day uh, any time we believe that jesus is on his way back to receive a church where we're going to meet him in the air that's called the rapture amen but then after the rapture will begin the period of great tribulation that's when the Antichrist is going to rise, where the temple is going to be rebuilt and dedicated. Amen. And then the Antichrist is going to come and try to take credit and be worshipped inside the temple. Yet yeah, the same temple right now in Jerusalem. Amen. Where they are fighting over. Amen. Not uh, And all the issues that are going on right now. So we have to pray even for what's going on uh, in Palestine and in Israel today. Uh, this is like on the brink of another war. You see rockets flying all across the sky. But can I tell you, it's all a part of God's ultimate plan. Amen. There are some things, and as we study and we go a little further into eschatology, we're going to discover, amen, that the uh, tribulation cannot end until the temple is rebuilt. Uh, amen. And everything they need for the temple being rebuilt, amen, is already uh, already uh, in order. But the exception of the property right now, it's in the hands in the hands of Muslim nations, amen. That's the dome, the golden dome, amen, is over the site on the site of the temple, the temple site, the foundation, uh, amen. But there, I don't know what's gonna happen, how it's gonna happen, but according to prophecy, amen, the temple is going to be rebuilt. Uh, and so we understand that that brings forth a whole lot of uh, questions and things, but praying it forward now, we have to understanding what God has prepared 
amen, the saints of God need to realize that our prayers will never go wasted. Oh, our prayers will never, amen. Number one, your prayers don't spoil. Amen. They don't spoil. They, they don't, they don't ruin. Amen. They, they don't, they don't wear out. Our prayers, amen, are blessed. Let's take a look now at the book of Revelations in the eighth chapter. Y'all give me about five minutes and then we'll move into uh, the message. Five minutes as we talk about in the book of Revelation. I'll give you time to find it. Revelations chapter eight. Revelations chapter eight. And beginning at verse one. You can find the very same thing also in, in chapter five. Revelations chapter five. Because we're going to find out that in the throne room of heaven, oh, bless God, in the throne room, we studied this right before the pandemic. We were in the middle of our studying of it, and we need to be refreshed and often, so we're going back to it. But in the throne room, there are, amen, the description. There's a painting in Revelations chapter 4 and 5 of who's present around the throne of God. Amen. Where Jesus stands at his right hand as the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. The 24, 20 and 4 elders, the four beasts that circle around the throne of God worship him and praise him. The number that no man can number. All of the angels. Amen. It's just a celestial being. And then it says the elders. Amen. Uh, amen. The elders in chapter 5 they had in their hand golden censers. Amen. Golden vials. Amen. Which were filled with the prayers of the saints. And that's why I want you to look at with me in verse number uh, eight chapter. Revelations chapter eight. Because I want us to understand that your prayers, your prayers, amen, uh, are beyond what you see right now. We're praying it forward. Every time you pray that God will bless this world, that God will bless, amen, our unborn generations, praying that God will bless, amen, our society in the midst of things that are happening in the pandemic, amen. The prayers that we pray right now are not just for now, but they are going to be for later. Chapter 8, verse 1 of the book of Revelation. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. And I saw the angels, uh, saw the seven angels, which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints, upon the golden altar which was before the throne and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and earthquakes. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The green grass withereth and the flower, the green grass withereth and the flower fades away, but the word of God shall stand forever. In this Revelations chapter five, uh, chapter eight, and then also in Revelations chapter five, we discover, Amen. The uh, the everlasting importance of prayer. When I say everlasting importance, and I am so grateful to God that when we pray, amen, when we come to God, amen, that God hears us and God answers. And so when we see that Jesus, the Son, the Lamb of God, the Lamb, slain before the foundation of the world, and we see the Lamb in the celestial throne room of heaven, if you can picture it with me in heaven, Jesus, the Lamb of God at the right hand. And in Revelation chapter five, Revelation chapter five, uh, let's start at verse five. It says, and one of the elders saith unto me, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which were the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, 
the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us by God, to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nations, and made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. That says a whole lot, even that to the 10th verse, and he has made us unto our God's kings and priests, and we shall reign on on the earth. A lot of this has to do not only with our prayers now, but the promises for later. I'm talking about praying it forward. The Bible declares, and it is true throughout the scripture, that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And we see here that even Jesus at the throne room of God, when he took, amen, out of the hand of God, amen, God who sits on the throne, majestic and mighty, holy, amen, and he had a book in his hand. A big book that was written on inside and on the outside. And the book had, amen, seven seals. And nobody could loose the seals but one. And the only one who can open up the Lamb's book of life. That's why it's called the Lamb's book of life. Because only the Lamb of God could open it. Amen. It was the Lamb's book. And so God, God had it in his right hand as he sat on the throne. As he sits, as he sits on the throne, uh, according to verse one, he says, and John, the revelator, John saw this and John said, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book. It was written on the within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And he saw a strong angel and the angel said, who is worthy? I want to tell you, nobody is worthy. Amen. Because you want what's in the book, the book, the lamb's book that's written inside and out. It's the names of all those who've been saved from the foundation of the world. My brothers and my sisters, I thank God that your name, amen, if you are a child of God, you've accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, my name, our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. I encourage anybody, if you have not received Jesus Christ, you ought to come say, sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. You want to make sure, amen, your name is written. You say, how is my name written and I haven't accepted Jesus Christ, the predestination of God. God already knew who would be saved and who would not be saved. And he already wrote the end, the end before the beginning got started. He knew who it was that would say, Lord, come and save me. So although the book is a lamb's book that came from the beginning and he was slain from the beginning of the foundation of the world, God already had it planned that he had somebody praying for you and for me. So Jesus, Jesus, amen, as he now speaks, Jesus, as he speaks, amen, uh, and he saw, we see him in the right hand, and Jesus takes uh, the lamb slain before on the, the throne of God. God has the book in his right hand, the hand of power, the place of position of honor, and that's where Jesus was, at the right hand of the Father, and the Bible says, amen, well, after the angel looked and said, I couldn't find nobody, uh, John says, I couldn't find, I wept much, because there was not found anyone worthy, no man worthy to open and read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders says, don't worry, John. There is one who has prevailed. It is the lion, uh, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. He hath prevailed. And that's Jesus, y'all. He prevailed what? When he died on Calvary's cross. He prevailed when he got up on the third day, rose from the grave with all power. When he shed his blood on Calvary, it was for the remission of our sins. So without the shedding of the blood, there is none. We could not be saved unless Jesus did what he did on Calvary's cross. And so we know that that, that uh, enabled him, that qualified him at, like none other to be able to open the seven seals of the book. But let me tell you, when he got the book, amen, uh, amen, when in verse number six, and I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts in the midst of the elder stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns, which is uh, the seven, which are the seven spirits of God. And sent forth into all the earth and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne and when he had taken the book the four beasts and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb having every one of them now these 24 elders had two hands right and one of the hands they had harps amen i'm telling you in one hand you got to have some praise 
Talk to me, y'all. Amen. Look at verse number six. Have it, amen. Verse number eight. And then when he had taken the book, the four and the twenty elders fell before the Lamb, having every one of them, every one of them had harps. Amen. And golden vials of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. The golden vials are the little containers. Sometimes you see them in the Catholic Church when they swing the incense. Amen. That's a vial. That's the and it was a golden vial that's in heaven. And the incense are mixed with the prayers of the saints. I want to tell you, and it's a sweet odor. It's a sweet smell. So I'm telling you, when you pray it forward, you amen. God hears your prayer. Your prayers are not wasted. As a matter of fact, God has plans for future use of the prayers of the righteous. He said, These are the prayers of the saints. So I encourage you. It for no other reason, y'all, but we got so many reasons to keep on praying it forward. Pray, amen, not only for what uh, is happening right now, but pray for the future. Pray for, amen, the coming, uh, the promise of God. So pray for prophetic utterances. Pray that God will continue to heal, amen, even beyond our lifetime. Some of us, amen, we don't think beyond when we're here, but we got to also realize that somebody got to deal with a lot of stuff when we go. So we got to pray it forward. Amen. And just like somebody prayed for you and somebody prayed for me, we got to continue to pray for one another. I thank God for praying mama, praying grandmama, praying amen, praying daddy, praying aunties, praying cousins. Amen. Thank God for praying wife, praying children. But I thank God that I know how to pray for myself. And we got to pray it, y'all. Pray it forward. Continue. Amen. Like somebody prayed for you. Be sure to pray for somebody else. Amen. Keep it, keep it praying. Keep it moving and keep it growing. Amen. Thank you so very much, Guan. God bless you. Arlena Brazier. Valerie Abraham. God bless you. Thank you for being on with us, Mother Patricia. Uh, amen. Those of you who are joining us. Now, I want to continue to move because, uh, and I'll do the announcements later. But right now, I want to get right into, uh, amen, honoring, honoring our precious, beloved mothers. Uh, this weekend, I hope you had a chance, uh, whatever we've did, and for those who's whose moms are resting in the presence of God, we encourage you and we ask you to enjoy those wonderful memories and the joyful thoughts, uh, amen, and of all those things and precious times. So we ask now that you would just hang in with us, amen. It wasn't a long sermon, but we're going to preach it and then we'll come back with our concluding remarks and we'll be finished with this Wednesday, Wisdom Wednesday, amen, praying it forward. But right now, we're going to go with this message, do it, do it for mama. Come on, let's enjoy this, uh, and we'll see you at the end of the sermon. That was, amen, a marriage, amen, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, was at the wedding. Oh, play, praise his holy name. It's been a little while now because of the pandemic. You know, we've had some stuff, we've done some things, but I'm, I'm wait. we had a whole lot of funerals. Somebody holler, yeah, Lord. Amen. It's time for us to catch up and have a whole lot of wins. Okay, I don't, I don't know who I'm hollering at. I'm just saying. Amen. Thank, I, had, I had my fair share of funerals for a while. Amen. But I'm looking for some baby blessings. I'm looking, amen. I'm looking for some baptisms. I'm, look, I'm, look, I'm looking for some joyous festivities. And praise God, ain't nothing like going to a real good wedding. There are different kinds of weddings, you know. There's some weddings, there's some weddings, the, the, amen. Some are very expensive, very costly, and then some they call, uh, call, call ghetto. <laughs> Don't go there. I'm, I'm okay. I'm just trying to say, I'm just, I'm trying to tell you the weather, whatever kind of wedding it is, you got to have some refreshments. <laughs> okay, y'all, y'all, y'all ain't hearing me. I, Amen. You you inviting guests to come see your nuptials. Amen. You ought to you ought to have somebody that's also to see what kind of victuals you have. Amen. So while you're doing your nuptials, you ought to at least. I wish I had some witness that can cook like Mary. He would tell you that you ought to have some food and some drink when that festivity comes. Don't don't invite guests to your event. And you ain't got nothing to give them. I wish I had a witness here. I'm, 
Amen. That's the wrong kind of party, y'all. Amen. You don't want to attend an event. They don't have nothing. Amen. A amen. At least give me some water and some fruit punch and amen. A piece of cake. Amen. You know, the Baptist church refreshment. But there, there, ought, there ought to be somebody. But Mary was at a wedding. And Jesus and his disciples were invited. Uh, it, it, everybody knows what it's like. Sometimes you can invite folk, and then some folk you invite, they invite other folk. And by the time the folk you invited invited the folk, the other folk, and somebody else invited them, you anybody ever had someone? Maybe you might have been the party crasher. Amen. Sometimes there are people who didn't even get the invitation, but they show up, and when they show up, they want to know what we're going to eat. I imagine, uh, I don't want to mess with nobody, but I imagine at this wedding people came and they were looking for wine but didn't have a gift. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, can I just be real for a minute, y'all? i leave you alone, but uh, I thank God that even back in Mary's day, they had festivities and even in festivities and even in life, every now and then stuff will run out. Are y'all going to let me preach this on Mother's Day? <laughs> Anybody been through life's experiences and it seems like some stuff just ran out on you? Amen. Anybody went to go handle some business and realize that you ran out of money? Anybody ever went to a different situation and you turned around to get somebody to help you only to discover you ran out of friends? Anybody ever went to and you tried to figure the thing out on your own only to discover you ran out of thinking? I'm just trying to tell you when everything Thing runs out, you still in good shape because Jesus can refill what's been emptied. I wish I had a witness here. I feel like preaching on Mama's Day. Anybody know that God can refill your emptiness? <laughs> Amen. Whatever it is that seems to have run out, whatever it is that seems like you can't make it, I'm just trying to tell you if you turn it over to the Lord and uh, let the Lord refill your cup. I'm a witness, He will. I remember the 23rd Psalms. It said, The Lord is my shepherd anybody 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 here ever needed the lord to fill your cup yes he fills my cup and let it overflow all i'm saying is thank you lord When life puts you on a path of empty, when it seems like everything you need has run out, can I tell you what to do? Do what Jesus' mama did. Are y'all praying with me? Jesus' mama went to Jesus and she said, Jesus, we need you to do something. I love the way the Bible says, says we have no wine. But Jesus looked at his mama. Amen. And he said, woman, what have I to do with thee? Well, I want to straighten something out real quick. <laughs> Before anybody gets it twisted, when I use as a subject, do it for mama. I need to let you know that mama wants you to do it for the master. If you're only doing it for mama and you're leaving out the master, then even mama's request will not bring benefit to your life. I thank you for doing what mama says, but when you do what mama says you best be sure that what mama says is what the master says is there anybody here that thank god for mamas that told us what the master said i thank god for a mama that didn't just tell me what she felt didn't just tell me what she thought but she told me what god said 
and with God she said all things are possible she said I may not be around but uh, if you trust in the Lord and you call on God he will he'll fix your path I'm doing it for mama but I'm doing it for the master Jesus said he said, Mama, what have I to do with you? But can I tell you? He said that, but he went on and did it for Mama. Yes, he didn't do it for the groom. He didn't do it for the bride. He didn't do it for the disciples. He didn't do it for the crowd. He did it because his mama, his mama asked him, but he did it because his daddy told him, I wish I had a witness here. Yeah, thank God for my mama, but I thank God the reason I had my mama is because my heavenly father knew what I needed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and Jesus said, all right, mama, yes, but not just because you asked me, but because I want to give glory, glory to my father. Can I tell you what the mama told the membership? You see, mama, she told the proud whatever y'all hear me whatever he tells you to do somebody say do it whatever Jesus tells you to do do it it may not make sense it may not uh, be the way you're used to doing it but whatever Jesus says do you ought to do that's what my mama told me that's what mary jesus mama told everybody whatever he says do it can you do me a favor touch your neighbor don't don't put your hands on them too much because it's still corona but but just tell them just do it oh uh -huh. if he tells you to pray do it if it tells you to testify do it if he tells you to witness to somebody do it if he tells you to share with somebody less fortunate do it when it tells you to come back to the house of praise you ought to do it and can I tell you why you ought to do it? You ought to do it not just because mama said do it, but do it because God's been doing it for you. God's been doing it for me. The old song says, Lord, do it. Lord, hey, Lord, do it for me. Do I have me a witness here? Can I do it one more time? Lord, Lord, do it, do it, do it, do it for me right now. Is there a witness here? When you do it for Jesus, won't it do it for you? Won't it make a way? out of no way won't he open doors somebody say yeah say yeah i did it for mama but because mama wanted me to do it for jesus do it for the master and so he said here's what you do i know your containers are empty and i know there's a difference between water and wine but can I tell you Jesus he's the master of both water and wine 
tell you he'll make water do what he say do. You remember in the storm, uh, and he stood out on the edge of the ship uh, and said, Peace, be still. Uh, and the waters laid down uh, and slumbered like a nap time. Uh, oh, he got power over water, uh, but he has power over wine. Don't you see Jesus with his disciples in the upper room? He says, take this bread, which is broken for you. And, but he said, this wine is the New Testament in my blood. He changed the wine into the blood of Jesus. He turned the water into wine. And I'm just trying to tell somebody, whatever you're going through, my God, uh, he will fix it for you. My God, he'll help you through it. Just keep on doing what mama said do. But make sure that what mama tells you to do is what the master says do. And when you do it for the master, and you do it in obedience to mama, God will, he'll bring a miracle. They took those empty, somebody say empty, empty containers and they poured in water, regular plain old H2O water. They put in water but by the obedience of Christ. But somewhere between pouring in and pouring out, God did a miracle. All I'm trying to say to somebody, he may not come when you want him to come, but somewhere in between pouring in, that's your obedience, and pouring out. Won't God change your situation? Won't God fix it? He'll turn your tears into joy. He'll turn your sorrow into shouting <laughs> do it the water was changed they did the taste test <laughs> y'all know the taste test huh? it, was, it used to be a taste test where they blindfold you and they say can you tell which one is the Pepsi and which one is the Coke they did the taste test Amen. And the governor of the feast did the taste test. And he says, the wine that y'all bought to me last was better than the wine y'all bought to me at the beginning. That ain't usually how it's done. Usually you serve the good stuff first. And then when folk kind of half tore up, they won't know the other stuff ain't good. I wish I had a witness. He said, but you didn't do a trick on us. You gave us the other stuff and then gave us the best. All I'm trying to tell somebody is Jesus is saving the best for the last. You had a hard time last year. Mamas, you had a hard time through the pandemic. But can I tell you on my way? On my way to leaving y'all alone, he saved the best, the best for last. He saw the best in me. Do it for mama. When everyone else around could only see the worst in me. He saw the best in me. And he'll give you the best. When everything else around could only see the worst in me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for our mothers. We thank you for a reminder of even the obedience of Jesus. Not just for our mothers, but we thank you. We do it for our master. We do it for you. Now pray for every soul in the sanctuary. Every believer, every mother. He, glory to God. Have your way. Encourage, comfort, bless, strengthen, and keep. 
We praise you in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Come on, y'all, put your hands together. Put your hands together. There might be another soul, amen, whether you're in the building outside, somebody maybe even at home. You know that Jesus is the only begotten son of God. He's God's only son. But we thank God that God gave Jesus to, to the world. So whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, whoever calls on Jesus shall be saved. If there might be one, now all you have to do is say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner and I want to be saved. Come into my life and save my soul in Jesus' name. And he says, you shall be saved. You shall be saved. Now, if you're already saved and you need a church home, Grace Temple is a good place to cast your lots. It's a good place to grow because grace is the place. Amen. And we're on a road, y'all, to doing great things for God. And we would love to have you be a part of this wonderful fellowship. We thank you. We praise you now. Jesus, bless every soldier. We give you glory. Amen. Come on, put your hands together now. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Let's get ready for our giving. Get ready for offering. Get ready for, thank you, Antoine, and all of our ushers back there. Hey, Mr. JJ and Ned. Amen. The welcome committee. Fred, thank you. Fred been on the on point today. Taking temperatures and we going through deacons training. Fred is a part of in deacons training with us. Amen. We're so proud of him. So proud of him. Amen. Amen. Thank God. And those of you who want to swipe, if you desire to swipe, we'll also have the ability, the ability for you to swipe your gifts. Amen. We want to be in the hands of the ushers as we come around. Fred is here holding as you fill out your. Praise God. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for those of you who have joined us. Amen. We thank God for anyone who has not uh, accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Amen. You just can't do that for mama. Amen. You got to do it. Amen. For yourself. Every tub got to sit on its own bottom. Amen. I thank God for Israel, Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. To those who uh, heard the message, but then you realize, and for grace, you realize that you need a salvation. You need to be saved. We thank God that also on Sunday, we had a candidate for baptism. Amen. Thank God we had a young presentation uh, at Israel, at Israel, young uh, Jahir Harris. And we thank God for him. Uh, and then, so there might be somebody else, amen, who know the goodness of God, that Jesus died for our sins, amen, that he, he uh, died on Calvary's cross and then he was buried and he rose for our justification. If you believe that, amen, you will need to cast your lots, become a part of this Christian family, become a part of this faith. I'm telling you, you won't find any places where you can grow and will love on you and will thank God for your participation and for sharing and for being a part of this holy, holy uh, fellowship. And so we, we welcome you, we encourage you, amen, to get into a Bible-believing fellowship. Get somewhere, amen, where they are studying the Word of God, where they're teaching and learning uh, the Word of God. And remember again, pray. Pray it forward. Pray it forward. Continue to pray not only for our personal needs, but pray for others, amen. Just like others prayed for, for you and prayed for me, it's our job to continue to pray uh, for those who may yet still be in need uh yet we're all we all stand in need of prayer my brothers and sisters uh also don't forget uh the annual session next week pacific district we're asking all of our members amen to be there on monday night we start monday afternoon at 10 at 10 monday morning at 10 a.m we have a morning service and then each evening beginning at 6.30 nightly, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nightly, the Pacific District. Monday night is the welcome night. Amen. I want all of Israel. I need all of Grace Temple. I need all of our friends, amen, to be with us at the opening night, Monday night. Amen. We have a special treat. Uh, amen. I'm uh, 
praying in the name of Jesus. I'm looking forward to preaching uh, and exciting um, being around all of our pastors, amen, all of our leaders of auxiliaries and ministries within the district. And we're just looking for you, uh, amen. We are the host of Israel. And so I need every member of Israel to be there. Wear your black jerseys, amen, the, the, uh, the jerseys, amen. Uh, we're going to be geared up as we sing, as we minister, as we do all that uh, throughout the week, throughout the week as we host the wonderful Pacific District Missionary Baptist Association. We have uh, so many other announcements and uh, we have a video clip and we'll see that during the course maybe on Friday. Uh, see it again to remind all of us, let every member of Israel, every member of Grace know, uh, amen, that we are, we are preparing, we're preparing for the district annual session, Monday the 17th through Friday the 21st and every night. Moderator Harold Mitchell will be doing his address on Thursday night. Lovely Haynes, Lovely Haynes, a moderator, will also be preaching on Tuesday night. And uh, Dr. Donald Clay, our Congress president, will be preaching on Wednesday night. We have all addresses and many other things. We're going to be honoring, honoring on Monday night, honoring all of those wonderful members of Israel who served in the district for many years, including our organizing pastor, uh, Dr. H.D. Higdon. So y'all be with us. Join us next week. Amen. We're going to be streaming throughout the week. Uh, amen. Everything that's happening, we're going to be streaming it. So our Wednesday and our Friday is going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Amen. Uh, and so we ask that you would join us uh, each night. We want you to be present. Be present at the church. But if you can't be present at the church, then certainly you can join us. Uh, amen. Via the... Um, the Israel and Grace Safer at Home online stream or from the Greater Emmanuel stream or the Pacific District. Uh, so either of those places you can be connected and see all the good going ons that will be happening. Yes, they'll be happening next week for our district annual session. Getting ready also, getting ready, saints, amen, for Israel's, amen, uh, church anniversary coming up real soon on June 13th, Sunday, June 13th is Israel's church anniversary, but on the 12th, amen, we're asking all the members and friends, all of us, we're going to the park. We're going to celebrate in the name of Jesus. We're going to celebrate, amen, by evangelizing, by witnessing, by praising. We're going to South Park, South Park, right in the heart of Los Angeles. Amen. We don't have to go far. We're going to the neighborhood. We're going to go with, amen, where people need to hear the word of God. We're going to sing in the newly renovated renovated South Park and we are excited uh, listen we want to come also on that day got enough chance to get them all clean we're gonna be wear uniformed and suited and booted with our jerseys again at the park amen and we're going to have a great time singing and praising God we also have new we have new um, gear hats hats and visors hats and visors uh, you'll be hearing more about them but for $25 you can order you can pre-order amen you can do it on givelify just like you would do with your tithes and offerings but when you give your tithe and offerings if you want a hat also put in amen separately don't put it together do it again as a different as a different post or as a different uh, swipe so it won't get them mixed up amen we don't want your ties mixed up with your hat praise his holy name but for hat and or visor they they both uh, cost $25 they are embroidered. They have the same. They have the same. Uh, the same logo. The same Israel logo that we have on our jerseys. It'll also be on the front of the hat. Embroidered, not, not ironed on. It's embroidered. And I'm telling you, it's uh, quality. Both the visor. They are adjustable. They fit any size head. Amen. And we want you to make sure that you purchase them uh, as we prepare to honor and to celebrate. Amen. Israel Baptist Church 87th Church Anniversary. So we're looking forward to it. Uh, let us know how many of you can make it because we want to make sure we reserve the space, reserve seating, and we got some special things because we ain't going to have you in the park and be hungry. Amen. We need to know how many people are coming so that we can prepare to do it in a good, uh, in, a, in a fun, and in a way that brings excellence. So as we prepare for all of those things, we ask that you will continue to stay in prayer. Pray it forward, y'all. Amen. Because even in the end, even the last days, even in heaven, your prayers are still of effect. Even when the saints of God are in the presence of God, the prayers of the saints are still stored up and God's going to use them. Amen. In the period of eschatology, he's using them. He's hearing them. He's blessing us right now. But I'm telling you, God, don't just take prayers and throw them away. Amen. He saves them. God stores them. And they are. It's coming up again. 
the prayer is. So continue to pray one for another. Thank you for praying for me and for Lady Barbara, praying for Israel and praying for Grace, praying for all of our families. And I want to uh, ask you to continue to pray one for another. Now, long as we reminded you with our giving, don't forget to give uh, faithfully, uh, amen, with your tithes and offerings, uh, the scholarship, the uh, capital campaign, whether you're doing it by Givelify, you're doing it by Zelle, by Cash App, Venmo, all the different methods that you are able to give, both uh, mobile uh, and online, or if you just want to put it in the mail. Amen. Check and or money order or you come by. And now that we are in the service every Sunday and every location, you can swipe when you come to worship your debit or your credit card. But we thank you for sowing a seed into these ministries uh, that we're able to continue to share the word of God. We continue to do the work of God and be the church that God is calling for in these last and evil days. So thank you for your givings. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you. Amen. Again, for everybody. Amen. However you've been sowing, however you've been sharing, just continue to do it as God has blessed you. And remember, not just what you give, but how you give it. The Lord loves a cheerful, a cheerful giver. So continue to stay cheerful uh, continue to give as God has so blessed you. Once again, thank you so much, Gerald and Shonda, Auntie Diane, amen. Lady Barbara, God bless you. And to all those who have joined us uh, throughout the course of the stream, uh, those who are on with us now, I'm praying that God will continue to bless your life, amen, as you pray for others, praying it forward, amen, as others have prayed for you. I ask that you continue to remember Amen. They can't nobody do us like Jesus. Amen. Now, may the Spirit of God go before you to guide you. May he be behind you to encourage you, above you to protect you, beneath you to sustain you. But may he be in you, the Holy Ghost, be in you to give you peace. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Lord and Savior, be dominion and power, both now and forever. God bless you. God bless you. I love you, and I'll see you again on Friday night. Don't forget about choir rehearsals also. Choir rehearsals, amen. Choir rehearsals, we're getting ready for annual session. Israel, amen, getting ready for Monday night and those who will be singing. Don't forget leadership meeting at Grace. Tomorrow night, leadership meeting. Grace Leadership, all the members of Grace, on the Grace Zoom Room, and then also on Friday, amen, the mass choir rehearsal for Pacific District. I'm asking Grace members, Israel member, choir members, amen, that we'll be here because we got members from other churches. We're using the whole sanctuary, amen. We're spacing out. We're learning new materials that we'll be able to sing, amen, together, and we'll be able to sing in our independent worships. Uh, amen. So thank you for about being there uh, in those rehearsals and preparation for next week. To God be the glory. Look to seeing you. Leadership meeting tomorrow, Grace. And then Friday, everybody who sings, be at Israel at 630 for choir rehearsal. Love you. I'll see you then. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Had to do that other thing where you was at. Amen. I still hear mama pray. Anybody remember when your mama or your grandmama, great granny, they be in the kitchen?
Jesus we come now on this glorious 